Hey guys, Pat here again for another video, and today we're going to be trading some stocks on Robinhood. The catch is we're going to be trading based on what's popular on Robinhood, so whatever sees the highest increase in users during the first hour of trading, we'll make trades on those and see how that turns out. It doesn't matter to me if it goes up or down, uh, it's just a fun experiment, getting some coding experience as well as trading experience. Most of my money is elsewhere in more high value stocks and more risk averse stocks as well. So this is just for fun and I'm comfortable with losing a significant portion of the $5,000 that I will invest. Now using Robinhood, uh, I wanted to start out with $5,000 and since a buddy invited me, Robinhood does this cool thing where it gives you a free share of stock once you join and this can range anywhere from like 8 bucks, like the one I got to $200 uh, my buddy actually got a Facebook stock and so if you would like to join Robinhood and start your investing journey click the link in the description and that'll start you out with one free stock as a disclaimer I'd recommend if you're investing money you should be able to be comfortable with leaving it there for about 10 years that way you'll never be forced to sell and any market downturn you'll be able to stomach and wait for it to come back up before you sell now the idea for this video came from the obvious fanfare around Robinhood and investing now that there's a lot less to do with all the quarantine measures going on and this is everywhere uh, even when I was at the gym I overheard somebody talking about IDEX and investing a significant portion of his money in it despite still having student loans saying that it was a long-term investment and I don't know too much about the specific stock but I know that it's pretty risky as it has been volatile the past couple weeks so that just goes to show the uh, amount of retail investors there are now and so I wanted to see if I could capitalize on that, see if that the momentum from popular stocks would be able to carry through and produce sizable returns. In addition, there is an insane amount of cash just sitting there among firms and institutions because people are waiting for a correction. So if these people decide that the correction is not coming and they decide to invest this money, it could lead toward a lot of momentum in the upward fashion. You even have people like Dave Portnoy talking about stocks can only go up. So that is where the idea came for this video and we'll see how it turns out. The first thing that brought me onto this idea was this website called robintrack.net. It tracks the number of users holding and I didn't realize this was possible, but Robinhood, uh, their API provides these numbers for any stock that you request. You can get initial statistics from this, you can do a look back period of an hour, uh, but I specifically wanted to get the data from Robinhood to make sure there was no delay. I did use this full Robintrack database download to do the prior analysis because it basically logs in a lot of CSVs the data for all the different stocks. So I could run my algorithm on historical data to see how it performed and see what modifications I needed to do in order to produce a sound initial strategy. Next I use tradingphysics.org as well as Investopedia to gather quotes historically for different stocks. And then I also use Yahoo Finance to gather previous opens and closes for stocks, as you will see later in the analysis. All of the code will be linked on a GitHub page in the description, so I'll just briefly go through it. Basically, this is what I used in order to run through all the dates that I was looking at for about the last month or so. Basically, I was gathering the top 15 stocks in terms of the increase in users holding from the night before to an hour or more into trading, whatever the Excel spreadsheet CSV provided to me. Take the folder of all the CSVs that Robin Track uses, and I removed any that had less than 2,500 users in the last recorded data point. So in doing this, I limited the amount of stocks I'd have to check and greatly reduced the runtime. Next, I wrote a program to get the ID list for any given ticker to its ID in Robinhood. Once we have the ID list, we just have a simple program that you would run the night before and this would query Robinhood for the number of people holding that. And I have a separate script, so about an hour into the market is when I run this, because the data that Robinhood provides isn't updated past the hour about, in my experience with it. I created different scripts so I didn't accidentally overwrite the CSVs because I wouldn't be able to get one back from the night before. And then the final script is what compares the two CSVs and sees which have the biggest differences. I could have automated more of my analysis, but it didn't seem worth the technical effort. So here you can see the analysis that I did manually. It was at this point of the analysis that I almost threw in the towel because I could not find a reasonable correlation on why some days were better than others with this strategy. But a little bit after that, I thought that maybe 
the reason was the big losers of the stocks and those were the ones that had gone up a lot already and joining in at that point was not a wise move because a lot of the value had already been taken and they were likely to go down as people sold their positions. First look at the price of the previous close. A green indicator means that it's gone down so there's still room for it to go up. Yellow means it's somewhere between 0 and 7% and then red means it's above 7%. But I also added the previous week open and so this showed if there was again already a huge increase or not and whether to be wary of that. And as you can see the one for the, the week change also produced better results as it turned green. Double green was averaging 6.49% compared to green, yellow, and yellow, yellow, which are about 2%. Based on this, I thought it was a good enough strategy to employ and use a decent amount of money on Robinhood and see how it went. Day one, let's see how this goes. The starting mount, 5,000, and then the 893 is just the free stock I got when I signed up. So I got the results, and it gave me some indicators. I couldn't buy Amazon because no fractional shares on my account. I traded on a red green because I, I figured the the green long term was more important. But as you can see here on my Robinhood account, we got five shares of Disney, one share of Apple, 70 shares of Fit, and 100 shares of ATHX. And we'll sell that at market open tomorrow. But as you can see, I don't, there's not a there's not an option to do that. So we'll just have to do that manually tomorrow. Uh, so just sold on market open, and I made about 18 bucks or something like that. So a little over 1%, but that's sort of what we expected based on the indicators. Alright, so we got some stocks again. It's pretty similar indicators, not too many good ones. One of them Amazon again. I put a little bit more money in because we didn't put much in yesterday. Virgin Galactic, Apple, and Microsoft. And we'll see how those perform. But again, not great indicators. That's because a lot of them have already popped. Alright, so update. It's uh, now Wednesday. And so the last day didn't go as well as the first. Probably went down about 1.5%, I think. Maybe 2%. Hopefully we'll get better indicators today. All right, so we got our first really interesting day with a lot of double greens, green yellows, yellow yellow as well. So we made a lot of purchases here. Some of them are riskier, but we'll see if the methodology works. So these are the shares that we bought. This is basically all the money that was in the account. That value is probably gonna change a decent amount. Get that recovery, go, go, go. After two less eventful days, yesterday was pretty wacky in terms of the price movement but we're back basically to where we were at the start. So we'll see how this last day goes, but pretty interesting movement. Another day where we got some pretty good indicators, a lot of green yellows, and then that green red right there was really close to a yellow and that red was as well. So that's why I purchased those. Some riskier stocks, the ones I purchased were energy related, pharmaceutical related, maritime related, and then one cannabis stock. That's what we're working with today. We'll see if the strategy pays off or not in the short term. So far it's been here and there, so we'll see. Just sold everything today at the open, and it turns out from everything we're down a little over $100, so let's do some analysis on that. We uh, experienced a net loss over the week, and this was worse than the S&P 500, which also went down though. And this can kind of be expected as these are riskier plays, so as the general stock market is going down, it's expected that these probably will go down more. Interestingly enough, the trades made, uh, the average was a negative 0.47% return, Whereas if I average all of them, it's 5%. So this goes to show that there is potentially value here, but this could be weighed unfairly by the ones that increased a ton. You would not know which ones these would be unless you can figure that out some other way. If you have any ideas, leave them in the comments. But this is an interesting strategy that it might continue to employ down the road and see how it works over a longer period of time. But obviously there isn't a ton of contributing evidence that this is foolproof in any manner. The historical data that is used here is very limited, obviously because I wanted to restrict it toward the time period that there were a ton of investors that there aren't normally. So this was an interesting look at uh, Robinhood and how the data that they provide could be used in a fashion like this. So coming back, we did not get any outsized returns. Actually, things were negative. This strategy could still be useful in the future, and I just wanted to share this to give people ideas. If you have any that you'd like me to try out, just leave them in the comments below. You don't want to just use one singular strategy in your investing and make sure to diversify enough so that no downturn in a specific industry or a risk category could cause you to lose a lot of money. I'm really interested in the intersection of coding and trading. So if you don't have the technical skills yourself and you'd want me to give something a try, just communicate that to me and we'll see how it goes. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. This has been Pat and I hope you have a good one.